Hello, everybody. Um, we are, uh, we'll get started here momentarily. Going to allow people to join. Um, so, give it another minute or so. We'll get started here. All right, welcome everybody. It's February, mid-February here. Winter is is well past over, and uh, we'll be discussing that a little bit in the market update. Um, but uh, it's February 2024, and um, we got a good stuff on hand here. We got a guest uh, guest on uh, our uh, Tommy Richardson, who's in charge of our uh, of our renewal services team here, uh, which is doing an excellent job, and and hopefully. Um, one thing you get out of this call is is to utilize uh, Tommy and his team services because uh, they can do great work for you guys and and uh, leave you to what you're doing best. That's bringing out new customers. So um, we're gonna get started here. Um, with me for us today, as always, is is Ali Ali Colloway, our manager of the uh, pricing and strategic solutions team here. Um, and and uh, I'm just introduce myself as well. I'm the director of pricing and strategic solutions team here, Scott Ebling. Uh, let's get started here, though. Um, so, um, run us through the agenda and everything there, Ellie, and tell us about Boxer a little bit. Sounds good. Um, so, we've got a lot going on today. We've got our about Box and updates for 2024. Um, then Scott will follow that up with a market update. And then we brought Mr. Tommy Richardson on to talk about our renewal services division, which is an entire department that's dedicated to helping you retain and keep your business after you have signed it the first time and done the hard work and won the customer. Um, moving right along, we'll talk a little bit about Box. Um, that's our agenda for today. Um, talking a little bit about Box, uh, Box or Broker Online Exchange is your ultimate commercial energy brokering partner. We provide independent energy brokers and affiliates with access to all top electricity and natural gas suppliers, instant pricing and cutting edge software, all supported by industry experts. Box has become the largest network of energy agents, brokers and consulting firms in North America. We connect a variety of diverse energy partners so they can each benefit from streamlined efficient options in deregulated natural gas and electricity markets you can see how you can scale your energy business nationally with our deregulated energy map right here um, and friendly reminder this is our deregulated energy map we do have service offerings for customers in regulated territories like renewables that we talked about last time and like energy efficiency measures even some demand response programs will apply to some of these areas that are not necessarily deregulated but bringing it back to our meat and potatoes our natural gas and electricity supply contracts you can see the deregulated gas only markets here in green deregulated power and gas markets in the bright blue there and then you'll see a lot of states that are kind of grayed out or darker um, and those say that they have limited availability the story on those is that those markets are large commercial and industrial natural gas markets so the united states is actually deregulated for natural gas all the way across from maine to california so if you have a customer that's large enough they're in the commercial manufacturing industrial uh, sector they could still be eligible um, to shop and to get their supply from one of our retailer partners um, in one of these limited availability states so reach out to us talk to us like i said we may have some other service offerings there as well if the customer is interested in you know purchasing some racks or something like that um, but otherwise, we can offer them uh, electricity or natural gas options all across this map with one of our supplier partners. Touching on our supplier partners really quick, we are partnered with 90 plus top suppliers, just about all of the top retailer brands in uh, the lower 48. 
You'll see a lot of familiar names on this list. You'll see Shell Energy, Champion Energy Services, Constellation, which are all, all very big brands. Um, and then you'll see some regional brands on here as well, or some smaller suppliers uh, that are maybe a little bit newer, lending either a competitive advantage with their pricing or niche expertise in their market. Um, so we've really got a good mix going. We've actually we've got a ton of suppliers um, and are closing a ton of business. We've actually been putting up where we're submitting most of our business and which markets are really competitive too on some of our socials. So when you guys get a chance, go ahead and check that out. But if you're looking for more supplier options to offer your customer, maybe you've sold a couple of these brands or maybe you have a relationship or have had a relationship with one of these guys in the past, but you want to be able to really do your due diligence and offer your customers the best pricing across the spectrum of suppliers that are out there, we partner with all of them. Come bring that business through Box. Another reason to do business with Box is our strategic solutions team. Um, so Box is here to allow every partner to become a full service energy consultant. We offer all of these services with a large team backing it to support you. So that's things from strategic procurement, usage analytics and budget reporting. Um, we offer an entire platform through our utility data box platform that offers energy sustainability strategies, tracking, benchmarking, those types of things. We are experts at contract analysis and negotiation, making sure that those contracts are bilateral, that they are written uh, to treat the customer fairly, that there's not language in there that is going to surprise any of the customers, regardless of what they have going on in the world of load shifting or energy efficiency or becoming a little bit more uh, green friendly or uh, environmentally friendly. Um, we can also help optimize the customer's price and product with customized products and pricing optimization. Several of our staff have worked on the retailer side building out these pricing models so they know the tricks, they know the components, they know the math, and we're able to keep all of our suppliers in check via that expertise. Um, and we also have an entire division that works on RFP management, more so for the public space. If you have any customers in the municipality, university, hospital, school space, um, or mush space, that is a great, great offering. We are working on rolling out our, our reverse auction platform as well. That will be part of this RFP management and execution suite. We're super excited about it. And like I was talking a little bit about before in terms of regulated markets or um, um, other services. We also offer items like demand response. We actually um, just brought on a really, really cool partner I want to shout out to um, on the renewable energy side uh, that provides RECs, car, you know, will special finance carbon capture products, um, has an incredibly robust offering in the renewable space all nationwide. So we are working very hard to bring on more and more options for you guys. Um, of course, like I said, meat and potatoes is going to be this strategic solutions team and all of the resources that we have allocated and really been intentional about building out our larger product suite so that we can help you guys with these larger customers um, and help provide uh, more options to all of your customers, whether that's additional product options, service options, supplier options, we've got something for your customers. So um, I think that wraps up our introduction to Box and I will hand it over to Mr. Scott Ebling here to do our market update. <laughs> So thank you, Ali. Uh, great job there. Yeah, and um, just want to mention as well, especially on the renewable side, we have many, many options. Um, we go very deep into uh, everywhere from rooftop solar partners, uh, you know, to accessing DPVA options for larger customers. Um, but they're definitely the most simplest way to, the simplest and risk-free way to really, and, and usually the cheapest to green up your portfolio is just buying straight up recs. And um, it's very simple and any size customer can do it. Um, and now we have uh, we have a really good partner that we just lined up to, that's what Ali was discussing, that um, we can simply, very simply, um, um, add these into anybody's uh, portfolio. And if you get project specific, and then which is more expensive, to just a standard green recs. Of course, we also have suppliers that offer this as well in the contracts. Um, but it's a good way to kind of do a price check or 
any customers that aren't with a supplier or in, or in a regulated state for that matter as well. If you're just in a regulated state, we can do it. And if they have international um, um, sites, we can we can uh, green that up as, as well. So um, we're here to offer any, anything that we can is offered out there we can, that can help you guys um, be a full service consultant we have available for you. Um, and then we're adding things on there beyond what most full service consultants do as well. So we're excited to do that. So let me get right, right into the market update here. And uh, I just gonna start on this chart because this is, as I go through my charts and create them, I, you know, this clearly was the headline and everybody saw this. This is natural gas, the front month contract. So from January period here, that's mostly February contract and we got the February, it's, it's the March contract, but this is it, and I, I think we're down to the low, low and 60. I thought I saw a print here this morning on it. So, um, but I just want to mention here that this really on you know, this thing is this is the CNBC price. This is kind of I like to call it the headline price. Everybody pays attention to this, like, oh my god, gas is 160 or 169, and it's a front month price. And I call it the CNBC price because you know people watch CNBC and they see it, and this is what CNBC loves to show. Look at gas is down. 50, you know, over 50%, and of course, you know, the same thing will happen here, and I'll show you in a second, but, you know, what we like to look at here is really kind of where really most people are kind of contracts are being executed, and that's in this area here um, from 25 to 26. That's a meat and potatoes where it's at. So we really didn't have that big of a move. This big move was really more in the front, and so what always drives me crazy is going back to the CNBC thing, and sorry, I'm not giving CNBC a plug here. I guess I'll never be on the show, but, um, you know, if you look at this March 24, what's going to happen? Say, say the gas market doesn't move at all in the next 12 months. You'll see on CNBC, we'll all show as an example where it's going to fall. It's like, oh, gas is 360. That's where the contract's at right now, right? And, you know, they'll say, well, it moved from a buck 60 to 360. You had like a 120% move in gas in the last seven months. And that's seriously what they'll show when, in a sense, really, this is the contract you buy here. You cannot buy here. And have usage all through here, unless you have a salt storage cavern, which I've never met a customer that does. Um, and this is the only way to do it. So this is really the curve. This meat and potatoes. What I'm trying to get to is, even though the CNBC price showed this big move, the front month price showed a big move down. This is really where most people are contracting. So um, customers say, "Oh my God, gas is down 60%, but my price only went down like a buck in power." Or, or you know, 20 cents in gas, like that's why, just to point that out. It's really important to to, to educate customers on that. Um, going back to energy price update, really more in depth here. Here's um, where we're currently stand here and all the prices. So it's sort of the three, still in the mid three dollar levels of 25 to 27 gas. Um, and of course, power prices are elevated, but prices have come off. Um, this is um, a big move down here and really kind of looking at, you know, really a in ERCOT, it's pretty normal for this 18 cent move, but we had definitely had a sell off in the heat rights with PGM West Hub, uh, Neepool, Comet, Ameren. Um, but really, if you look at the PGM areas, you know, as we discussed last month, we thought this chart here of the, oh, got out over here a little bit. I'm going to go to it in a second here. Yeah, right here. One second. Sorry. This forecast uh, is a little ambitious. I think the market's starting to realize it too, but we had a big movement up last month without a big gas movement. So the heat rates moved out and now they're moving down. And again, just to uh, a quick summary, heat rate is the power price divided by the gas price. So um, in general, this does seem to move in a little bit of a tandem um, and, it, and power moved outwards last month uh, up to, I mean, up to like in December, January. Uh, and now the last 12, last uh, four weeks here, it's moved back down. And it's really kind of thinking, take digesting this a little bit more and just kind of realizing that as we did last month, saying that this is a little bit, a uh, little bit over, overcooked here. Um, so going back to the PGM index prices here, uh, five year average, 38.83, 12 month average, uh, 32.75. You see, we continue to have these low, low index prices. February, I put that in here because Really, I think it's gonna kind of clear around this level anyways, uh, judging from where the weather's coming in at. Um, uh, we could have some, some, you know, 
finger kind of bigger days here next in a few days here but then it's going to be warming up so we can be there i want to point out one thing here though and again just talking about these heat rates and just how they're moved out um this five-year average here 3883 uh the gas prices are very similar to what they are for mature markets 25 26 27 yet the power prices are at 45 48 29 um so it's still so definitely uh, a much higher heat rate than what is clear in the past uh, and it's you know probably definitely taking account in the forecast, obviously, uh, amongst other things. And you know we still tend to believe that it's still a little overrise, but we don't know. We could be wrong, and that's why you hedge uh, and have a disciplined hedge strategy. So that's that. Now let's go back to ERCOT. ERCOT is really. I mean, look at this February price. I think it was at twelve dollars down here. Um, flipped it on this morning. We're hitting four or five dollars here for the morning ramp up um, really has dropped uh, quite a bit down and um, you know five-year average is 48.20 uh, the last 12 months 55.26 we did not have this August it is August uh, cleared mostly where say July July August September was at uh, that area we've gone 39 dollars for the last 12 months average this is definitely a, a big 10 260 print um, and that's not where we're at but it's kind of looking at the forward prices here are 48.92 so it's right around that five-year average where gas price is at um but there's there's definitely a dynamic here where more and more renewables are coming online um which is a good thing and they're actually their capacity um capacity factors are coming come better i mean their um reserve margins are, are getting higher and higher uh which is a good thing as well um so interesting dynamics there and again um definitely more kind of fun head strategies there um gas storage very healthy level here uh we have this is uh estimating what this next week's coming in at we have a pretty good idea of that around 75 80 print which is going to put us above just above the five-year high um we had this see here from the last time we had this print was kind of coming down because we had that really cold period in the middle of january but now we're right back charge along these five-year highs here and you know and the winter storage forecast now is definitely lifted up. Um, we're in 1955, uh, above 1600 BCF is considered healthy. I, I think we're definitely going to close above 2 TCF, uh, according to what the uh, the weather models are showing right now for the last uh, week of February uh, in, in early March. So above 1600 BCF is considered healthy. Um, we are guaranteed to finish above that, and it's going to be extremely healthy. Um, and yep, yeah, looks like Phil nailed it. Um, there spills that groundhog out there in Pennsylvania. Groundhog says time for an early spring. Yes, here it is, eight to 14 day uh, temperature probability. This is the 21st through 27th. Um, it's here. And I want to note too, uh, we're in the warning period now, winter. Um, we hit the abyss, uh, usually it's in January 26th. It might be off by a day or so, usually average low temperature around the country. Um, and right now from today till mid-march it's warming up i know most of the country 10 degrees um throughout the east coast and chicago for instance and you know really we're all warming up so th th these these above averages now are, are going to click us in near 50 for instance in chicago these this is this is printing you know uh you know 60 60 bcf uh withdrawal so to speak here and this is why I actually think we can hit 2100, possibly 2200 storage if, if this kind of just keeps going on. Um, LNG export growth, um, a lot of stuff going on with this uh, in the last month. Of course, everybody pretty much knows Biden has announced no new projects will be approved. Um, a lot of people look at that as like, there's not gonna be any new LNG come on, that's incorrect, it's still happening. Oops, whoa, went, went too far. Um, these are all still happening. This is projects under construction, um, and they are going to go. It's going to be good. Um, there actually is some that have been approved as well. They're going to be going through that aren't even on this list here, but we still expect about a 12, 12 BCF um, gas uh, export capacity to come online in the next um, next like three years and a lot of that's going to be pushed out to the end of 24 to 25 so not really much growth there and it's, that's why gas is really selling off heavily um and but yeah that's still going to be there um but you know we'll have a home 
Uh, this is our chart. We've shown this a few times now. Um, global supply increase and global estimated demand increase. And um, we're not sure if it's going to be there. I mean, maybe maybe Biden has done done a favor here to to the uh, people who are going to build these out because there could potentially be, be somewhat of a glut. Um, and we also have right now gas prices in Europe, Asia are, are under 10 and, and ticking ready to go under nine. It might be under nine right now this morning actually. So. Um, these are prices that were in the $50 range uh, a year and a half ago. And um, so we'll um, it's gonna be an interesting story to see what unfolds there. But there will be export capacity. It's a big thing I want everybody to know. There is export capacity and more and more coming on online here. Um, and these will be happening. So put that out there. Um, natural gas uh, production uh, still trending higher. Yes, we did have some well freeze offs here in mid-January and that really deep cold. Uh, we hit up a record um, yesterday of 107. Uh, so this February is trending higher. Uh, this could actually might even be near 107 actually by the end of the month hits, um, but this is where we're kind of at right now. So this continues continues to go higher, which is really quite a surprise to a lot of people here. Um, you know, it's just despite this rate pound drop, uh, usually it's about a six month lag. Um, so if you look at even at the depths of this here, uh, we should be hitting that up. By you know, by March, um, but really even had this big fall here in in, in more in the summer, which definitely can see a, a more of a drop off now. But there is a lot of what's called drilled uncompleted wells that are out there um, that um, that are just wells that were tapped before and were really really rig was that they did the drill them out and uh, those are kind of being tapped. But that's inventory that could have ramifications down the road um, because there's less of those available. But we still see a production. You know, I've been saying it, it's not like a broken record that we're going to have a you know, kind of decline in it sometime. I still think we will. I don't think we're going to be 110 or anything. But you know, I, I still think we'll have a drop here, two, three BCF uh, of production. And it's just going to be really, even especially if prices continue to come downwards, um, there's no, uh, definitely going to be slowing down that because economics won't be there. And lastly, have a strategy. This is funny. This re this uh, line here and this reward thing is keeps getting smaller. I might have changed the font on that reward <laughs> down there just to fill that in. But um, next 12 month gas prices now is 251. Um, and what I like to show in this is this really kind of just shows you really if you look at all these dips we've had always had come up above this line. Um, that's where the next 12 months is at. If you aren't hedged next 12 months, this is your kind of Risk reward probability chart. I mean, granted, we're not going to probably hit these 15 levels, but um, there's not much more room to to continue going lower. And this is spot month, so you're not going to find a long period of time where you know the gas is really hanging down there much lower than that. Uh, but be disciplined. Uh, this is more of about uh, customers are not really you know taking a long position. You are covering a short position um, in the most volatile commodity market in the world, uh, which is power and gas. So. That's all I have today. Um, any questions? Put them in the um, please put them in the, uh, in the in the in the webinar. Uh, go to webinar page there, or, or just uh, email us. Um, you know, move on here. We'll get Tommy to take it over here with our focus on renewal services. Go ahead, Tommy. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Informative update. Um, again, my name is Tommy Richardson. I'm director of renewal management services here at Fox. Early on in my career, moons ago, I sold Yellow Page advertising. Now, I realize I just dated myself with that statement. Um, if you're born post-1996, I may have educated you. Maybe you didn't know there actually was a world without the World Wide Web, but anyhow, I digress. Um, there was a stat that we used back in my yellow page sales that was so impactful that it stuck with me and i've kind of carried it forward all throughout my career and it's that most businesses lose 10 percent of their customer base year over year through no fault of their own i'll let that sink in 10 percent of their customer base year over year through no fault of their own things change 
companies change. They relocate, they go out of business, they merge, decision makers change. The role gets redefined, they get promoted, they go work somewhere else, they retire. Our industry, <laughs> you talk about change, our industry is arguably the most volatile of all industries in terms of change. Price markets, uh, power markets are moving every hour. There's uh, regulatory change, there's legislative change. There's geopolitical change. There's severe weather change. I mean, you name it, it's littered with risk and change. And all of this change going on can have a direct impact on your revenue streams and your customer trip. Acquiring customers is hard. It just is. And those that think it's not, it's usually because they've never tried it, right? They don't have a frame of reference. Box does. We get it. That's why we started this business 10 years ago, right? It's to provide all of the necessary people, processes, and infrastructure to support energy brokers and consultants out in the marketplace so they can do what they do best, acquire and serve customers. So, what is renewal management services and where does that, that fit in? So, we'll go to that next slide, thank you. Okay, so it's a suite of services, i.e. free services. It's part of our overall value add that we have for our partners of resources and tools. And it was born out of this desire, not only desire, but commitment and investment on our part to help our partners in, in three additional ways. First, help protect your existing revenues. We built out technology that when an account drops, and it happens from time to time, sometimes with intent, sometimes without knowledge or intent, to immediately notify our partners and also give them the automation tools to, to be able to quickly and easily get that customer reinstated and back on flow and protect that revenue stream. We also have a dedicated retention team that's headed by Kevin Schaefer, and their sole goal and sole responsibility is to help you protect your existing revenue. Second way that we help is by extending your revenue, your revenue stream or extending that runway out. Um, we have technology that we have built out that notifies our, um, all of our partners for their upcoming renewals so they can stay informed, they've got visibility, they know what's in the pipeline, what's coming up. We've also recently re released and updated our auto renewals tool. I call it auto renewals 2.0, the second version. And the early results are really, really um, positive and, and impactful. And the way it works, it basically not only notifies the customer on behalf of the partner that the renewal is coming at up. It also gives that partner um, visibility to that notice going out and gives that customer the ability to produce the executable documents and transact on that with just a couple of clicks of the button. Um, and then we also have, like the retention team, we have a dedicated renewals team. So focus is helping our partners all extend that revenue stream out, get customers renewed, and capture as much as we can um, that doesn't get filed into that folder of through no fault of our own, right? Because it's expensive and um, it's difficult to acquire new customers. And then the third way that we help is like one of my favorites, actually. Um, is that we work, we partner with the whole spectrum of models out there. You name it, we partnered with them in the past or currently 
uh, partnering with them in the model. The one limitation that they all share, just like you and I, is time, okay? You can't buy more time. There's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 365 days in a year, and you can't buy more time. But what we can provide is help free up more time for you to use however you choose. Maybe that's moving up scale on your size of customer. Maybe it's going out and acquiring more customers, or maybe it's just spending more time doing what you love with the people that you love. So I had to throw in some love. It is Valentine's Day out there. So <laughs> we're all about spreading the love. Um, okay, next slide. All right, so my wife, after my illustrious advertising, yellow page advertising career, I made a couple of hops before I landed in this industry. It was also a long time ago. <laughs> a lot has changed since then. She struggled then, and she still struggles now to understand exactly um, what I do. So when I started uh, at Box, uh, she, she we had a conversation, we were talking one night early on. She's like, you know, my coworkers and friends, um, they all ask like, what do you do? What does Box do? And I just don't know what to tell them. I said, baby, it's really simple, okay? Tell them we help energy brokers and consultants. She's like, that's it? And I go, yep, that's it, that's what we do. We help energy brokers and consultants. Now, you can get into a, the whole string of ways that we help, but ultimately, that's what we do, is we help energy brokers and consultants accomplish whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish, right? So, if you haven't seen the movie Jerry Maguire, it's a good, it's good Valentine's flick. By the way, this is good. here's another golden nugget for you. If you've seen it or you haven't seen it, you might, you know, pull it up on the on your favorite streaming service and, and watch it again tonight. Make some popcorn, get a little wine, you know, get a little date night, little rom-com. Well, there's a scene in there where Jerry, played by Tom Cruise, is begging. He's pleading with his client. Help me to help you. Help me to help you. Very famous scene. That's what we're doing. We're imploring you. We're begging you. Help us to help you. Okay? And here's the really cool part about it. Your help is easy. It's just a conversation. So if you are currently partnering with us, And you're not taking full advantage of re renewal services, suite of services that we offer, please reach out to your account manager or email me directly. You don't have to put any fluff. Hey, this is Scott over at whatever. Here's my number. Give me a call, man. I'd like to talk to you. Let's have that conversation. If you're not partnering with us today, we're begging and implore, imploring you to help us help you too with that same conversation. Please reach out to us because renewal services, these are for existing partners on their upcoming renewals, but the new partner deals today are the, the renewal partner deals of tomorrow. And we have a whole, whole host of different ways that we can actually help you in your business. And we'd love to have the conversation. That's, that's that's it. Any any questions out there? All right, Tommy. Tommy, thanks. That was that was a wonderful wonderful um, plug there. And thanks for joining us on the call. I mean, I always the Jerry Maguire movie makes me laugh because I always I remember watching that. And I've seen it many times, and I've shown my kids it as well. And I said like it was genius in Hollywood to come up with this combination of romantic comedy that involves football. So, yes. 
The combination yeah, yes. of damn hit at the box office, you know, throw it a headline. Something for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it's a great movie. I think uh Cuba Gooding Jr. won a uh uh, Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, that had a great performance in there, um, and it's really, it's funny, it's entertaining, it's it's uh, it's pretty good. And he also learned a lot about the uh, sports agency world, so, um, but awesome stuff. And and uh, I do remember the Yellow Pages, Tommy. Uh, I do have a question on here. Uh, I'm kidding. It says what's the Yellow Pages, but <laughs> look it up. <laughs> There's a reason why all these heating and cooling and air conditioning places are named. Triple A heating and cooling. It's because that's what's in there when you go in there. Um, but uh, you know, um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's what's it's funny because that's a great answer. I get that question a lot too. What do we do? And and you know, to anyone a rubber services company, what's that? And it's so true. We we are here to make you know our broker services partners, um, our, our our brokers, our consultants out there, energy brokers, consultants, um, to enlarge those services, um, make them bigger than they are, improve what they can product they can offer, um, increase the, you know, definitely in bigger deals involving the strategic solutions team, increasing their chances of winning a deal. Um, and then, you know, lastly, the more importantly, in the end, it frees up, it just important, it frees up a ton of their time. And especially using something like the renewal services team, it frees up your time, uh, you know, to deal with, with you know, with the renewals, you know, the deal also um, dealing the deals, all the commission reports you get, organizing some suppliers, and getting your broker license, you don't have to deal with any of that stuff. Um, so it frees up your time so you're able to go out there and sell more and bring in more customers. So um, it's a reason why we have every month, you know, 200 plus active brokers and on an annual basis, a thousand active brokers here. It's because, you know, we have proven to them and they, that, that, that we increase and enhance their business and they make more money by utilizing something like us. So um, it's, in last year, it's funny, I was listening to a podcast, I had a lot of driving time last week for customer meetings and uh, I was listening to this podcast and it was all about, you know, um, increasing your efficiency and automation and, um, you know, kind of doling out things that really, A, you don't really enjoy doing and B, things that, um, that that you know, can be done done cheaper um, than you're kind of really great at. So I like to look at that and just going back to renewal services. This is something that you know we have we have experts that do this um, and they'll do it for you and you can go out and bring in new customers and that's your value. So you got to think of it as an opportunity cost. Every one of these that you say, yeah, I'm going to do. Every time that you go out and you say. I'm going to work on commission reports for the next five hours uh, every every week, and every every hour you spend out there um, trying to deal with the, the the bureaucratic headache of dealing with state agencies on on licenses, and you know you get the point. Every time you do that, that's an hour you're not spending bringing a new customer, and you got always should break down how many hours it take me to get acquire a new customer, and new customers are everything. And that's what provides the revenue. And that's what we're trying to do, do for you is free up that time. So um, it's, it's a hack. And especially today with all the AI and everything out there, it's another way of hacking and getting stuff done um, that, you know, uh, and freeing up your time to do what really you get paid to do. That's really all I have. Um, looking at some questions here. Um, uh, first question, I'll let you take this. Does Box bill the customer or carrier and provider? Ellie? Uh, generally, Box will not bill the customer. Um, those bills will come directly from the energy retailer with which the customer signs their contract. So no money changing hands between Box and the customer, just uh, just good business between the supplier and uh, the end user. Excellent. So thank you. Um, and um, another question here, what is the likelihood of the U.S. banning gas exports and shutting down all terminals to export gas? Um, 
it, it it's not happening. <laughs> um, and I'll it, tell you why is really the U.S. Um, one thing that we're known for is our um, essentially the contract law um, and international contracts, and we thrive on that. Um, and all these LNG terminals are tied to uh, contracts right now that, that we will be shipping out the gas and even the ones that are currently being built. So just to ban it outright, I don't really see happening unless there's an absolute emergency situation here, which we got buck 70 front mark gas. So it's not an emergency situation by any means right now. But that's really the only way to be temporary kind of thing. I don't think you see any large firms think that they're going to like ban the shipment of gas. Um, what they are doing is, of course, reviewing uh, any new um, any new any new uh, construction uh, or permitting of any new construction uh, uh, for gas. But an outright ban, no, it's not happening. And I think that's it for the webinar um, today. Uh, Picking up that picture, I love that picture. Um, this, again, just to remind everybody, um, we're here to serve you. Uh, we're here to help you guys out. Um, I think we talked a lot already in this webinar. This is our job, it's our passion. We're here to really help your business grow. We take pride in that. We love seeing success stories. So um, just contact us if any of our services or anything, any way we can help you. Um, and let us know of any other, uh, any other broker or consultants or anybody else that might be interested in and getting into this space that you know um, we do have a referral program. So just want to give that a plug. So uh, talk to your account executive about that. All right, everybody have a great month. Uh, looking forward to talking to you next month. We'll be getting the data on the calendar here um, sometime this week. All right, take care, everybody. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Thanks, everybody.